welcome back to my channel. My name is Devani, and once again, it's the end of the month, so I'm bringing you another video of Deb's bookshelf. Once again, I'm going to give you a rundown on what books I've read and give you a recommendation on, you know, which ones you should go for and which ones you can skip. But before we get too far, please hit that like and subscribe button, and let's get to the books. So this month, it's the books that I read for the month of April. Um, just like March, this month's a little bit crazy. We are still packing and still getting ready to go, so I don't think I have a single physical book in my house, which is fine, thank God for Kindle. This month, I think I read four books. They've all been on the Kindle, and I'm surprised they even got this many books. Um, truthfully, at the beginning of this week, I only read two books, and then I worked two night shifts and finished two books in two days. So let's get to it. This month, I read four books. So all the books that I read, they've been in my TBR list, my to be read list, and um, I'm just going through them. I'm trying really hard not to buy any books, whether they're physical, because we have nowhere to put them right now, or digital books, because um, I have a lot. So that didn't work, and I definitely bought a few, and I'm trying to get through them. But this month, all the books that I've read have been on my TBR list, and I'm just trying to work through that. I've also decided to jump in on something that I saw on Instagram, and it's the Colleen Hoover 2021 Challenge. I've mentioned it before, and I absolutely love Colleen Hoover. I think she's an amazing author, and I have yet to read one of her books that I didn't like. So, trying to get through that challenge, um, and then I'm documenting it in Instagram stories and whatnot, where I am in that challenge. So in this Colleen Hoover, or Coho, as she's affectionately called, marathon, there are 2, 4, 5, 10, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 24 books of hers that you can get through to read. Of those 24, I think I've read eight, I think. So we're pretty good, we're on track, and up for those eight, I read two of them this month. So without further ado, these are the four books that I read for the month of April. Number one, first book I read this month is called The Last Story of Mina Lee by Nancy Juhoon Kim. I apologize, I butchered that name. Okay, so this book, it's been in my um, TPR list for a while. It's actually a Reese's Book Club book, so I had 100% faith in it. And um, it wasn't bad. It's kind of a story from two perspectives. You have Mina Lee, the title character, and kind of a backstory on her life, and then the current story of her son, or sorry, of her daughter, Margot, who Margot's never been close to her mom. She comes to visit, and her mother is dead. And it looks a little sus, it looks a little suspicious. In present time, Margot's trying to figure out like what happened, A, and then who is her mother? She truthfully doesn't know her mother. She doesn't know anything about her. She kind of resented her. It's a twofold story. We're seeing how Margaret or Margot is seeing everything play out in real time, as well as the backstory of Mina and her heartbreak and all this stuff that Margot, I think by the end of the book, doesn't even know the whole backstory. The book was good, as expected. Like I've really never been disappointed by a Reese's Book Club book. In reading it, I gave it a four out of five stars. Um, and I think it was worth it. It was absolutely worth the four out of five that it got. I was really intrigued in the story. Like, I think I read it in a couple days. It just was really good. <laughs> I think it's a good one. As always, I'm going to recommend it because Reese's Book Club has yet to let me down. Um, and FYI, with this book, it is always on sale on an Amazon Daily Deal. So if you are buying it on Kindle, you can probably pick it up for like three bucks. So why not? barely remembering these books. Oh, this one. Okay, number two. The second book I read this month is the Colleen Hoover book that I mentioned was part of our challenge. It is called It Ends With Us. So I was listening to The Morning Toast all month and it's Claudia Oshray. She read it and she said it was a great one, so I had it in my Kindle already. So I decided to give it a go. This one was a doozy. Okay. So our tagline for the book is, sometimes it's the one who loves you who hurts you the most. And boy is it true in this book. Starting from the jump, our main character, Lily, when she was growing up, she did not have a great relationship with her father, um, mainly because she saw firsthand him abusing, physically abusing her mother, trigger warning. This book has a lot of abuse. 
um, I guess physical and mental, but you've been warned. But after seeing this firsthand, she she developed this friendship with a guy, um, just a kid from school who did not have life easy. His name's Atlas, and he's her first love. They fall in love, and it's it's cutesy, like it's your high school first love, and then he moves away. And that's our backstory, really. So where we start off our book, Lily's in Boston, she just left her father's funeral. She really could care less that he's gone, and um, she meets this guy. He's kind of aggressive and arrogant and cocky and beautiful and smart. He's a doctor. So. They kind of have this spark at first, but they're not here for it. They're not into the same thing. He's more into one night stands, and she's more of a relationship kind of gal. He keeps popping up here. They can't get out of each other's heads, and so let's give it a whirl. They have a, they get into a relationship, and it's crazy. It's, it's a lot really fast. Also, while all this is going on in her almost perfect relationship with Ryle, she has a run-in again with the guy from her past, Atlas, and just everything goes wild afterwards. So everybody who I heard talking about this book, you're not wrong. This book is amazing. I gave it a four and a half out of five because um, truthfully it wasn't a five out of five because I did kind of forget the story after I was done reading and I knew that's what was going to happen. But it was good. So if you are going to jump in on that Colleen Hoover bandwagon, this is not your first go. Your first go to read is definitely Verity. Jump on that. After Verity, there's a lot of places you can go. Um, she has some like heavy hitters that are really, really deep, and then she has some that are more, I guess, light and fluffy, and then she has a couple in the mid, like Verity is a psychological thriller, and that one is bonkers. Um, so I would say start off with Verity, maybe go into a regretting you, heart bones maybe, but this one here is definitely the heavy hitters. There was a lot of feelings, and not gonna lie, I cried. It was intense. There was a lot. So this book, four and a half out of five, absolutely great. I recommend it. And it is on that Colleen Hoover 2021 challenge. So if you're going to join in, there's my review on that. The third book I read this month is our Redheads Book Club book of the month. It is called Twice in a Blue Room, Twice in a Blue Moon by Christina Lauren. I've read, I think, two Christina Lauren books now, um, Half Night Stand and In Holidays, and both were great. She's very chick lit, girly, great. This one, I loved it literally from the first page. Um, it's everything I love. It's like old time movie star, so I'm thinking, you know, Turner Classic Movies, um, daughter, family relationship, love, starts off in, is it in Paris or in London? I don't know. Starts off in Europe. And it's just, it starts as teenagers and it takes us straight through to when we're adults. Tate Jones, long lost daughter of a movie star, it is their family secret. Nobody knows her mom and her grandmother. Don't let anyone, don't let her tell anyone. She goes on vacation with her grandma, um, which is rare. And she meets this guy and it's just, they click and they're in love. They are also teenagers. So she falls in love and says, this is this is a guy who I can completely trust with anything. He's been honest with me about everything and we're just so comfortable. I'm gonna let him in on my secret. So she does. And then the next day, like TMZ is outside of the hotel. He sold her story. So she she's now spent like the last 18 years or so, 14 years, 18 years, hating this guy. Cause he sold her out. Um, on the plus side, that secret of her being the long lost daughter of the celebrity brought them back together and she gets to reconnect with her father. Fast forward, we're now in modern times. She's a big celebrity, her dad's still a big celebrity and they're doing a movie together. But surprise, that guy, our long lost love, he's also involved in the movie. So this book was great because you're always rooting for the characters to get back together. Um, I hear in the review some people were rooting for Tate to get, like, have a real relationship with her father, but for some reason I wasn't here for that. Um, but this book had me on the edge of my seat. I just needed to know what happened. You know it's going to be a great love story, and you know it's going to end up well, but there were just so many areas where things were not going right, and I needed them to. So, I liked this one. I gave it a 5 out of 5. Um, I don't know, I think it's maybe like the old Hollywood aspect to it that just put me over the edge there, but I really like this book. Christina Lauren, I think you're great, and yeah, this book was good. 
five out of five. I'm a liar. This month I read five books. Yeah, I definitely didn't write down that fifth book. Yeah, I read five books. I guess I squeezed another one in. Okay, so the fourth book I read this month is called The Other Side. It is by Kim Holden, who also wrote The Bright Side series. So I think, yeah, The Bright Side was one of our Redhead Book Club books of the month previously, and it was a good one. I gave that one five out of five. This book I also gave five out of five because Kim Holden, Kim Holden makes you feel things that you did not know you were gonna feel. So the synopsis of this book is, there's the other side. So we have this side of life where you're dealing with everything and our main character here, he just had a lot on him. He had a rough life. Um, his sister committed suicide um, and he felt that it was his fault. His mother made him feel that it was his fault. He was, he was poor, like he just had a rough go. But uh, I, with all the pressure, because you're seeing this from his perspective where he's just trying to make it through to the end of high school and then after that he's done. Um, so from his perspective, he's always down, he's always struggling, he meets this person and although he really likes her and he really wants to be her friend, he knows like, I'm nothing, there's nothing, she's better off without me. But as much as he's literally dying inside, um, he's secretly caring, like he thinks he's a jerk and he calls himself an asshole, but he's actually not that bad. So all the way through, you get through a lot of the book and he is just, he's ready to end it all. Then we jump back into the present and now we are on the other side of that awful cloud of depression. And this book was so raw and I'm really glad that I read the um, acknowledgements and all the the author's notes afterwards because Kim Holden does say like she she was suicidal and she was right there ready to do it and I have a whole aside from this book like just lately I have a whole new perspective on depression and um, just seeing it from, from closer um, perspectives and this book is it this book was real um, you felt horrible for for a main character and um, although it's like he had nothing to live for and he, he didn't see that and basically from you the reader you're not seeing that either like there's really nothing going on here um, but then you see this there's always that optimistic side you just have to get there and although you are at rock bottom there's an other side to your situation and so various points in the books we have like you know different health lines to call if you're feeling depressed or if you're feeling like you want to hurt yourself and this book absolutely is a trigger warning um the whole thing is real rough and real deep but it was also really good i read this book really quick i think i finished this book in like a day maybe two at best um everyone who read this book says they cried i believe you because i did it was it was not even a roller coaster of emotions there was no up and down it was just down and then we had to build back up and i guess that's kind of the whole concept of the book like when you're in this whole depression and everything you're down but when you get to the other side that's where we build back up and it's really good really 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 good and i recommend this to everyone this book is on kindle unlimited just like kim holden's other books so get the subscription and now you get all these books essentially for free so five out of five go read it the last book i read this month is november 9th it is a Colleen Hoover book. I feel as though it's one of her early books, um, and I've had it, or earlier I should say, 2015. I've had it in my TBR list for the longest time, never got around to it, but because we were in this 20, 2021 Coho Challenge, I have to. I started the book two days ago, and I finished it yesterday. Actually, I might have started it yesterday and finished it yesterday. It was that good. Similar to Twice in the Blue Moon, we've got this child actress. Her dad's a big star, and they also don't have the best relationship. Coincidence. And there stems from the date, November 9th. No, November 9th is the date that her life changed forever. She was a victim of a fire, and so that's the day that like her body physically changed, but she also had all these insecurities. Um, 
And it's also the day that her relationship with her father changed because she just had all this resentment towards him and carried that through the last couple of years of her life where in the day when her book starts, she meets this guy and she doesn't know him from anywhere. And he completely like stands up for her or her dad and they have this instant attraction. And, but she promised herself, I'm not gonna fall in love until I'm 23 and I'm, a, I'm an adult, you know, and I have, I know where I, I don't wanna fall in love with someone and give myself to someone else before I know who I am. So they make this deal, like although instant attraction, like you're my instant boyfriend, um, we're not gonna give each other a phone number, we're not gonna communicate, we're just gonna meet up with each other on November 9th for the next five years. And that's what they do. Um, but what you don't find out till really later on in the book where on one of their November 9th meetups, Fallon now starts to think, like, is this whole relationship a lie? Is this guy that I met a lie? November 9th is actually a pretty significant day for him as well. And it is so intertwined, it is crazy, this book was so good. It was so good. I don't know if I said it before, but Colleen Hoover, I really don't think you can do any wrong. I gave it a five out of five. Um, I read it in one day. Like I stayed up after a night shift to read the, the, the end of the book. As is with real life, so much happens in a year and you're getting all of that in like these chapter snippets. But then when we finally get to the, I guess close to the end of the book, we get the fill in in between of what goes on in some of these areas of the lives in between the different November 9ths. It's so good. It's empowering about like self-worth, um, about like second chances. Um, a lot is about like, you might only have one side of the story and there could be a lot more to it. Um, there was a bit in the middle, like when she kind of had that whole like, is he who I really thought he was? And I hate that in books, movies, all of it. But we, because you just don't give someone a chance to explain themselves and that's extremely annoying. It worked out, all is well, the book is good, there's a lot of feelings, go read it. And while you're at it, jump on that challenge. I'm going to put it in my bookstagram, Insta stories, and I'm probably going to put it on the page too, like who else is doing this Colleen Hoover challenge, because it is so good and you should jump on it. She's a really great author and cult flavor right now. But those are the evidently five books I read this month. So where am I in my book challenge for the year? I am on number 19 of my 65 book goal for the year. I started, I guess, number 20, probably one o'clock this morning and it's, it's going good so far. Like I'm barely done chapter one and I'm loving it so far. So hopefully it stays on that list that of really good books. So you'll hear about it next month. Another really cool thing that I started doing to track my books, I keep a, a, a list of it on Goodreads, but this month I got into digital planning because I love a planner. I love to be organized that way, but with this whole pandemic and lockdown, there is literally no reason to have a planner and there's no reason to go and spend money on one. So one of the things that I started doing is tracking my books on my, um, on my digital planner, on my iPad, and I'm, you know, getting my little bookshelf and coloring in all the pictures. So that's gonna be a really fun thing to do to also track my books and have more of a visual of like who I've been reading. But that's that, that's where I am on this book journey for the year. I don't know, I'm really hoping I hit that goal. Right now I feel like I'm in a bit of a, either a book rut or like a pandemic rut. We are in lockdown version 3.2. So there's really nothing to do, but I also just still feel motivated to read. So. That's where we are, that's that on that. So those are the books that I read this month. I hope you enjoyed them. I really hope you jump in on that Colleen Hoover um, marathon challenge, whatever, with me. I'm gonna put the link, or I'm gonna put the screenshot of what I've been reading in my Insta stories. I'll also put the challenge information on my stories as well. So if you follow me on Instagram, you will see that. It'll also be really great if you like and subscribe. Also share these. Let me know what you want to see in these Deb's Bookshelf videos. Loving the Insta the Bookstagram life. Love seeing everything that everyone's been posting there and everyone's hot takes on books. Until then, hope you like this video and I will see you in the next video.